I don't think I need a script to do this, but picture this. You're a semi-truck driver, all right? It's the day you're going home, but you have to make some deliveries before you do that. So you go to your distribution center a little bit before midnight, you hook up, you, you get your paperwork, you're all good, and you start driving and uh, you know, you feel fine. You're rested, you're not hungry, you know, you're not drowsy, you're able to focus clearly, you don't feel sick or anything, and I don't know, if you're me, you turn on um, uh, the Red Thread broadcast uh, with uh, Charlie in it, uh, Moist Critical, Penguin Zero. Um, I just started listening to that, it's really cool. Lots of conspiracies and weird spooky stories and stuff, and it's kind of fun to listen to while you're driving at night. And, you know, they start the story and, you know, the podcast by saying thank you for listening. You know, if you're drinking your coffee and having your breakfast and listening to the show, hope you have a good day. If you're listening to us while you're having your commute to work, you know, be safe, don't crash. If you're listening to The Red Thread on your commute, we appreciate it. Uh, drive safe, please. Don't crash listening to us. That is very bad PR. Well, I'd like to give an in-person review here of the, the episode I was listening to. It was the Dyatlov episode. I haven't finished it yet for obvious reasons that are about to become very clear in a couple seconds here. But unfortunately, I did crash the semi-truck. So, great show, but unfortunately, I still crashed. So, I think I'm not very good at following directions. Um, but let me explain why I crashed. Because it is really freaking spooky. And this is not like a, a weird April Fool's joke, because this did actually happen on April Fool's at about, I don't know, 1, one ten in the morning. I'm driving down the road. I've been driving for about an hour because I was about 60 miles from the distribution center. I was on I-380 South, mile marker 27, right next to an exit. Uh, well, like an, an overpass exit with the exit ramps and stuff. And uh, I'm driving along. You know, my stomach starts to feel really, really gross. Like there's just a whole bunch of crap sitting in it. And it feels like it's bubbling and churning and I just feel awful. Right? Well, instead of pooping my pants or throwing up like how I thought I was going to, I started to feel really tingly all over my body. Um, you know, like pins and needles, like if your arm ever falls asleep or your leg ever falls asleep. I started to feel that feeling all over my body, starting at my fingertips and toes and, and just started spreading all over to the point where it even started spreading all over my torso and my shoulders and like places that wouldn't even make sense. Um, how does that fall asleep? And then that feeling starts spreading to my head and then my head starts getting fuzzy. Then thinking starts becoming really difficult and I think, oh, I, I don't feel good. I need to, I need to start slowing down. So I start slowing down the semi truck. You know, I basically I take my foot off the accelerator. I I, I don't hit the brake. Um, I can't remember why. I don't think I really could, because thinking and then acting upon my, on those thoughts deliberately was really difficult. Because as I was starting to slow down, I was like, oh, you know, people are gonna think I'm driving really slowly, and I am. So I should probably turn on my hazards. You know, my flashing lights to let people know something's wrong. And uh, it takes about, it felt like a long time, like 10, 15 seconds, before I was finally able to force my arm to press that hazard button because it was just so hard to think and move my body in a deliberate, conscious way. I couldn't think. I could barely think. I was slowing down, my hazards were on, I was looking for a safe place to stop, you know, somewhere where the shoulder was safe or like an exit ramp, ideally. And, well, the only way I can say this is, is the last thing I remember is going around, you know, a curved section of the highway and going 40 miles an hour. That is the absolute last thing I remember. And then, what feels like in an instant, I come to, you know, things are starting to come into fruition. I can't even, I don't, I'm really disoriented. I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. Um, I, I realize the truck's not moving. I'm like, why is the truck not moving? Because I'm looking around and all I can see is the dash. I can't see out the windows. Um, but then as everything starts coming into focus, suddenly I can see outside the truck. And I realize I'm not just in the ditch. I am in the center median, the grassy area between uh, the different directions of the interstate. Well, it became very clear to me, oh crap, I've crashed my truck. But I started thinking, how? I didn't fall asleep, I wasn't tired. Um, and I wasn't in pain, I wasn't injured, but I was worried I'd hit someone or something. So I get out and I look around and all I could see was a hole in the divider fence between uh, the two different directions of the highway. 
and I was a little spooked because the nose of the truck was coming up over the shoulder of the opposite direction into oncoming traffic. I wasn't in the road anymore, but it was just barely on the edge and uh, the trailer was sticking out on the other side, just barely on the edge of the other direction. And still a little surprised I wasn't injured. The truck is, the front bumper is destroyed. It's not leaking fluids or anything, but I made sure it wasn't running. You know, headlight was tore off, but you know, the bumper and hood has to be basically completely replaced. The trailer looked fine and I, you know, I didn't see any wrecked cars or anything. Not that I was necessarily, I felt strangely lucid, right? I didn't feel groggy. Um, I didn't feel crazy unusual, right? But this is this is a bad situation no matter what. So I let my dispatch know. I call the cops at around 1.30 and, you know, they get there shortly thereafter because someone had already called it in. I didn't know if that was because they saw me crash or just saw me on the side of the road with my hazard on, hazards on without tape around it like how they do after, you know, they responded to a crashed, you know, semi-truck or whatever or a car. So, um, yeah. So they take me to the ER, which was conveniently uh, right next to where I crashed. And what I mean right next to, like, they took the exit and then it was just there. Um, I was in Hiawatha, uh, in Iowa, right next to the exit, right next to, I think it was a Mercy Hospital of some kind. They do all the tests, they check my blood, you know, I wasn't drunk, I wasn't on drugs or anything like that. I don't take prescription medications, I wasn't tired, I wasn't starving. All of the things that would normally make you tired or potentially pass out didn't make sense. Um, the doctor was able to rule out things like seizures because of how lucid I was and how awake I was. Um, you know, I could think clearly. I was unusually stoic, but I think that was just adrenaline. Uh, CT can came up with no problems. X-ray, no problems. Everything was no problems, even with the EKG. Those things, by the way, all those weird electrode things, whatever they're called, that you put all over your body... Taking those off hurts when you have body hair. They hurt. Got waxed by the ER, basically, just in really random places. Yeah, so basically the, the doctor at the ER posited that it wasn't a seizure and that he was saying maybe it's some kind of electrical problem with your heart. The problem is, is it's really hard to tell because all of your, si your vitals and all that look normal now. It could be something like AFib, something like that. Um, apparently, I have a history of that in my family. I didn't know that until two days ago when I crashed a truck. Uh, so I didn't tell the doctor I had history of that or that my family had history because I had never passed out before, ever. And I've never had problems with my heart before. And I'm 25, so that wouldn't have been my first thought. So it, none of this made sense to me. Absolutely none of this. And, and the doctor was rightfully very confused. And he said, well, it would only help if you had another episode while you were hooked up to my machines because it would be a lot more clear. Um, so he said, you know, you're probably going to have to get a monitor or something or find another way to diagnose it to like a, what, what is it called? An ultrasound? I didn't know guys could get ultrasounds for anything, but I guess, sure, cool. So that's probably something I'm gonna have to do. Treatments for things like AFib range from medication to heart surgery. I don't know what I have. Um, it's just a big deal because I can't legally work or my job, my company won't let me work. And it's very stressful because that is my main source of income. And they don't have things like, my company doesn't have anything like short-term or long-term disability. This, this is stressful. Um, I can't really go very long without my, my job. And um, I can't drive, you know, with a, any kind of peace of mind because what if this happens again? Whether it's in the truck or in the M3. So I have, I have to deal with this. And it's, uh, it's really freaky. But just some extra extra details to make it even more freaky is that my my company, you know, it's a company truck, so they have dash cams in their trucks called Lytics cameras. They won't. I don't get access to the footage whenever anything happens. I wish I could because I could show you guys my awesome driving of dodging some real bad drivers out there and being a an A plus driver myself. But uh, in this case, uh, I I don't even know if I'd be able to show it to you guys anyways. But basically, the camera gets triggered by a few things. Uh, going past our speed policy of 70 miles an hour, it's, 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 it's something like that. Exiting your lane too many times without using your turn signals, like say you're distracted or falling asleep or something, that can get triggered. Braking too hard, turning too hard, because there's, you know, 
Uh, it There's like yaw sensors in there, or maybe even G sensors that to detect hard, unsafe turning. Um, all kinds of stuff. Um, but there's also in, obviously sensors for collisions. And that's what set mine off for, what, for whatever reason. Nothing else did except for the collision. So the camera doesn't catch me passing out. The camera doesn't catch me leaving my lane. Um, and what's even more shocking is the camera doesn't catch me going onto the opposite side of the highway and going the wrong way down the interstate. So who knows how long I went down the road unconscious for. Because the last thing I remember is going 40 miles an hour on a curved section of the interstate. And apparently the camera footage starts with me already on the wrong side of the interstate swerving around for about I guess six to eight seconds because it's about 12 seconds of footage and then crashing into the grassy area at about 15 miles an hour it starts with me going 40 so it can't have been much longer but that means I was unconscious with the truck moving for probably like 20 seconds um, and I didn't hit anybody thankfully and I didn't hit the concrete supports of the interchange right next to the ER. Because, you know, if I had hit someone, it probably would have killed them. If I had hit the concrete, you know, columns or whatever, it probably would have killed me. Everyone thought that I was lucky, lucky to be alive, and that was just a very easy way to get killed. Everyone thought, wow. Anyone else, they probably would have been dead. So, yeah. It's kind of remarkable I'm alive. Even more remarkable, in fact, I'm not bruised. I have no injuries, as far as I know. I'm not sore. Um, I'm still going to make sure to get checked out. I know my doctor's going to want to make sure. But um, really freaky, because I didn't know I was on the opposite side of the road. Because in the footage, you see my body getting jostled around by the whole accident. And everyone said you looked like a corpse getting thrashed around. Because I didn't respond to any of it. Even when the truck finally came to a stop after the collision. You know, the, the crashing into the center. I didn't move. I didn't react. And the logging device in the truck. By the time I came to and I looked at it. It said I had been stopped for at least a minute or two. And so, the doctor said. You probably shouldn't be driving. Unless this happens again. It could only happen once a year. It could happen. Or it could happen every day. There's no way to really say for sure. I'll tell you what though. I feel mostly normal. But this part of my body definitely doesn't feel normal anymore. Um, feels a little tighter, a little more sensitive, a little more tired. And uh, I just want to get this resolved and uh, get back to normal or get back to being better than however I was before. <laughs> I didn't know this was a problem I had. Um, I'm sure there were warning signs and I just didn't catch them or I noticed them and I zeroed in on the wrong conclusion. So... I don't really know what the takeaway is here, because this is what a lot of people would call a non-preventable uh, situation. Because I tried to prevent it. I tried to stop. But I lost consciousness while trying to slow down the truck, and I crashed anyways. So, it sucks. It's, it's freaky. Uh, but the silver lining is, I get to spend more time with my kids. Um, the alternative being that if I had crashed, that would be it. Uh, which would be really depressing, because I only get to go home once a week. I'm going to try and relax. I'm not very good at relaxing, but I'm going to work on it. I'll just work on some videos, hang out with my family. And, um, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted and let you guys know uh, when we finally figure this out and when I get back to being better, whether it's with medication or surgery. It is what it is. Um, hopefully, <laughs> the hospitals don't bankrupt me. I'm, I'm sure they're going to try. And uh, hopefully I can get cleared to uh, work with no limitations. Wish me luck. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. I've got some uh, M3 GTR stuff for Car Topics Explained planned. And um, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. I am. Um, I need to give my buddy a call just to fact check my script first. And then uh, I'll, I'll record it. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'm Tom the Racing Joker. One of a hell of a thing to talk about, huh? Um, it's a little different than a pullover video where I complain about the cops being turds. I almost died. And, uh, quite frankly, 
All the odds were not in my favor, but somehow I survived. So, I'm gonna make use of it. That good luck. Hopefully I didn't use all of it up, because I very well could have.